that this is Sergeant Pepper's We hope you will enjoy the show What's going on guys? JD here. Welcome back to History in the Mix. Bonus, I guess, whatever I'm going to call this. Uh, I'm going to talk about why I've been gone and everything in a different video. If you're looking for the answer to that, this is not the video. We're going to be focusing on the title of the video. But before we do that, I want to introduce a special new member of the History in the Mix team. Okay, so I've been getting frustrated a lot with my microphone and how my audio equipment sounds. So I would like to introduce... Paul McCartney, Paul McCartney, who is holding my lapel microphone, and it looks very bad and very unofficial, but, uh, so, even though this is basically a Michael Jackson channel, uh, I also love the Beatles, uh, and Paul McCartney, and John Lennon, all their solo stuff. So, uh, whenever a big Beatles release comes around, I want to take a little stray from Jackson Street and, uh, talk about what's going on. Uh, I did one about two months ago on Paul McCartney's Egypt Station. I reviewed everything track by track. And this video is going to be pretty similar to that. Okay, so last year, the Beatles estate, I don't know, I'm not going to call it that, Apple, Universal Music, whatever, they remixed Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, my favorite album of all time by any artist. Now, remix doesn't mean there's some dubstep trap crap behind it. It means I went to the original master tapes and remixed everything. So like the whole experience you're getting with your headphones is gonna be different. And last year's mix, I mean, Beatles fans will tell you it was like hearing it for the first time and I'm the same way. And I remember the day it came out and that's all I could listen to for like the next year. So here I am now. So this year of 2018 celebrates the 50th anniversary of my second favorite album of all time done by anybody. The White Album. The White Album has been completely remastered in stereo by the son of the producer of this original album. The producer of the original album, George Martin's son, Giles, went back into the original... Oh, God. The original master tapes. God, I can imagine listening to that. So he had every track, every multi-track, the drum loops, whatever, and he went in there, remastered it, remixed it with a whole team, and I'm going to be talking about almost every track. I'm going to be pointing out, well, okay, not every track. I'm going to be going and talking about the tracks that really I felt changed. I just did an audio check and I really didn't like it. So we're moving pole closer. I just need to come up with an idea where I can have my microphone not on me, but out of frame. I'll work on it. I'll work on it 100%. This is Paul McCartney. Okay, so the first track, as always on the White Album, is... Back in the USSR, this was the original single off the album, and may I just say, I love this song. I'm back in the USSR, you don't know how lucky you are, boy. And what this mix did differently, because if you're watching this, I assume you've heard the album before. I don't remember which channel it was, it was either the right or the left, but the plane, you hear the plane coming, and it comes in one channel. And then it slowly comes in to the other one. And it's so good. It like goes through your head. I love that. That was an amazing addition to the mix. We didn't get that on the original one. We just had the airplane in one channel. And then we had the whole song in the other. It was bad. The 2009 remixes are very, very bad. So bad there. Michael Jackson. Uh, but no. They completely perfected that. Such a great idea to have the airplane come in one side. So, so good. It's good to be back home. But with all of this good stuff I'm going to be talking about, there has to be some bad stuff. So, one of my favorite tracks off the White Album... I did not like the mix on this at all. Now, obviously they went back and re remixed it, maybe you guys feel different, but I feel like this sounds exactly like the 2009 mix. It was vocals on one side and stuff on the other side, is how I got the mix listening to it for the first time. Uh... And there's not much you can do because it's basically just Paul and a piano, but I feel like they could have went off of that better. Uh, but whatever. I Martha, my dear, I love that song so much. I just wish it would have been more of a cohesive unit in the headphones instead of one on one side and one on the other. I hate that in Beatles music, and it's everywhere. Like, literally, it's not just on Spotify, it's not just on Apple, literally, any, even CDs. Vocals on one side and music on the other side with almost any Beatles album. 
another one of my favorite tracks off the Wine album, Rocky Raccoon, which is actually one of the songs that made me want to learn guitar in the first place. And I do play Rocky Raccoon a lot. I'm, like when somebody says, hey, you can play guitar, Rocky Raccoon is the first one I go to. Rocky Raccoon. So in this mix, a lot of the instrumentation is a lot more evident. And I loved it. Uh, one thing that I wrote down in my notes actually were the drums. The drums, you can hear the drums a lot more in this one. And there's a, and I, listening to this, there were so many elements in various songs that I hadn't heard before. And it was really weird, and there, there's more to that later. But with Rocky Raccoon, I love it. I really do. And a lot of people don't like Rocky Raccoon because they think it, go, it goes on too long. But I, it's just another form of Paul telling a story. It works so good. Uh, and this mix was successful. 100%. The little drums. God, I don't... Because Ringo left during the White Album sessions. If you didn't know, he walked out. Uh, so this may be Paul playing on drums. I'm not sure. But whoever did drums on this rocked it. Now, I know I didn't talk about much on disc one. Uh, but I, I'm just really talking about what stood out to me. So we're going to go to disc two, which is con the, the double album of the White Album. And the first track on there, Birthday... The background vocals in the song that I didn't even know existed are a lot more evident on here. And so were the guitars. I knew there was one guitar, but you could really hear the rest, like the background guitars, which I can only assume were played by either John or George. And man, is it a rock fest. Like this feels like you're in the room with guitars and everywhere. It was so good. Such a good mix. I'm just going to keep saying that these are good mixes. That's literally going to be this video, is me talking about how good everything is. Okay, now I know I really just said I, I loved Birthday, but probably my favorite remix on here, Your Blues. Yes, I'm lonely. Wanna die. Oh my god, they messed with the vocal? and gave it like more of an echo, which maybe just, it didn't translate over to the new mix. Maybe the original mix had an echo. But man, it feels like John like walked up to a karaoke bar and, and was just open mic. It sounded so good. It's like John was like higher than all the instrumentation. It sounded so good. You can hear John's feeling, what he's saying. It's such a spectacular job on your blues, which it was never one of my favorite Beatles songs, but man, did Giles take this song and do wonders to it. Oh my god, I just looked at my notes and forgot this mix existed. Okay, so forget about your blues. That's not my favorite mix. Helter Skelter, probably the most famous song off the White Album. Oh my god, this mix is so good. So amazing. So you're listening to it. You hear in one side... When I get to the bottom, I go back to the top of the slide. And then on this side, the drum, the, the, the hi-hats on the drums start kicking in on the other side. And then it just, mm, right when it switches, when I see you again, it like gets all in the middle and everything just comes together so good. Oh my God, I'm literally geeking out right now. But that mix was fantastic. How it did that effect. Oh my god. It, mm. And then the last track I'm going to be talking about on the normal album, then we're going to go into the Esher demos, is Revolution number nine. We all love it. We all love it. Number nine. Number nine. Number nine. Jeez. Oh, but they actually, listen to me, they made Revolution number nine listenable. I don't know how they did it. I have no idea, but they made it listenable. There was like vocals of George Martin talking to George Harrison in Revolution Number no. 9 that I had never heard before. And I've heard Revolution Number no. 9 all the way through a bunch of times. And I heard it was like him saying something about an apple or something. And they made it listenable. And like the stereo mix and the 2009 mix, the Revolution Number no. 9, when he said number 9, it says number in this ear and 9 in the other, and it kind of switches through. It still does that. But he really brought out the backing vocals uh, and the Beatles talking during it, which, wow, it was, it was like listening to it for the first time. But man, just the album alone, the the first two discs, which are the only ones that are in my set, uh, man, such a terrific job. It really was like listening to the White Album for the first time. And I know that that's going to sound corny and maybe the Beatles estate or Apple paid me. No, it was just a fantastic job. 
uh, remastered. Every artist needs to have their catalog remastered like this. So we all know the Beatles went to India. And so when they did, they wrote a bunch of songs. And then, right when they came back, they all met at George Harrison's house and demoed them. And that is what we call the Esher Demos. And that is what we call the Escher Demos. Escher, Esher, I don't know. So what they all are is basically the lead Beatle that sings on the track uh, with an acoustic guitar. Like with Oobla Dee, Oobla Da, it was Paul with a guitar, continuing story of Bungalow Bill, it was John, and While My Guitar Gently Weeps was George. Now, I love alternate takes, I love demos. These really didn't do anything for me, and that's because they are so original, they are so close to the original track, which just goes to show how awesome the Beatles really were. This is the first time of them singing it, I think, but um, it was so great. With all of these, it's just them and a guitar, and they're double tracking themselves. If you don't know what that means, they did a take, and then they did another take, singing it at the same pace and the same speed to add some more umph to their vocals, and they did that to themselves, and they're so close to the original take that it's crazy. What I did is I listened to all three of these discs through one time at the same time, which probably wasn't a good idea and maybe ruined my Escher experience, uh, but it, they didn't really do a lot for me, but there's still something you have to hear at least once. There was one, I think it was Happiness is a Warm Gun, yeah it was, where John just gets lost, he gets distracted, and it's so amazing to see into his mind. And then, as an added bonus, not only do they have Paula Thetan, Pam, and Mean Mr. Mustard from Abbey Road, they also have Junk and Child of Nature. Junk is on the McCartney One album. And Child of Nature would become John Lennon's biggest, well, second biggest hit, Jealous Guy. I'm just a jealous guy. And though I don't agree that they should have added these, I don't think they should have. I think they should have saved them. Because literally, you could play me this Esher demo of junk, and then the McCartney 1 junk, and I couldn't tell the difference. They are just so awesome, and how they know exactly what they want, and it works so good. With Child of Nature, it was cool to hear, because, um... It's basically Jealous Guy, but with completely different lyrics. It did feel like a reject of Mother Nature's son, Child of Nature. I feel like there may have been some competitiveness in there, similar to Penny Lane and Strawberry Fields. But, um, man, did he did John Lennon improve upon Ch uh, 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 Child of Nature? If you are in any sense a Beatles fan, you missed on Egypt Station, you missed on the Imagine Box set, you have to get this. And you need to get Sgt. Pepper too. This is a work of art this remaster this the, the this remix how they did everything i don't it's so good and so revolutionary next year i hope they do abbey road because they're kind of going in order i would love to see an abbey road remaster but this one you need to go out and get it it's so good uh because i feel like they hired giles martin who cares so much about art and music he was the perfect one for the job and did such a fan fantastic job. Now, even though I got mine early, I bought the CD, which is why I got it early, but you guys are, I'm hoping to get this up by Wednesday, maybe it's Thursday, but on Friday, this is available to stream for free on Spotify and Apple Music, wherever you get your music, and it's free. You have to listen to it. Like, literally, they are handing you this on a silver platter. You have to hear it. This is, if, if you bought the White Album back in 68, I still think this would be like listening to it for the first time. So big compliments to the Beatles store where I ordered this for sending it literally almost a week early. Love that. So yeah, be sure to follow me on Twitter at History in the Mix and on Instagram at Mixing History. Be sure to subscribe, baby. Turn the bell on, you know. Or if you want Paul, if you want Paul McCartney to stay, we can get him to stay, and that would help me out a lot. Remember, make that change. All the links to buying the this particular set that I have are down below on the Beatles store, Amazon, whatever. Go do it. And Apple, please don't copyright the, this video. I'm really I'm literally telling people to go buy your product. Don't copyright me, please. Did I already say make that change? I don't know. But I feel like with all my Beatles videos, I need to say make that change, you know. Go ahead and do it.
Hello, this is Michael Jackson. Thank you so much for being here. More to come. Keep checking in. Yeah.